All right, good morning, everyone. Um, we'll call to order the June meeting of the Binghamton Traffic Board. It's June 9th, uh, 2022. The first item of business is approval of the minutes from the May 12th, 2022 meeting. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we have anyone on the line today? I don't see anyone here. Anyone on the line to address the, the board for public comment? Okay, we'll move past that section then. Um, okay, first order of business under traffic board determination, 28 Riverside Drive. Um, this was before traffic board at the May meeting. It's a request for an installation of a driveway between parcels, uh, the applicants at 28 Riverside Drive. Um, the recommendation from both the traffic division and the engineering department was to deny this request. If I recall, that denial was based on um, uh, the not not meeting the amount of um, space needed much space. Uh, between the parcels, and I think a retaining wall would have been required. Um, does anyone have any discussion or any questions on this? Okay. If not, then I, I would take a motion to, to deny this request. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Okay, next up, Port Street and State Street. This was a request for review of additional parking for delivery or drop-off spots. Um, Sergeant, could you give us the overview of this? Yes, uh, we went out and spoke with uh, Han, um, to, and uh, his uh, concern was that there's no adequate uh, space for food pickups, especially during the peak hour during the day. There, He has a bunch of spots right in front of his businesses, but there are 30 minutes, and he believed that the pickups, whoever, uh, they're only there for five minutes, but they have to pay for 30 minutes and they come back again in 30 minutes, the parking space is taken. So originally we were going to do uh, right turning lane, create two parking spots in the right turning lane. Uh, the second option that we have is the angled parking right in front of his place there that there's a five parking spaces there are 30 minutes parking we can make one of them as a 15 minute parking spot designated for food pickups and whoever is just running in to get okay is there any discussion or questions on this one my feeling at this time is um, I think we need a little bit more time to talk to some of the other business owners there. Um, the traffic division presented us with is presenting us with two options. Yeah. He, his concern was also about the loading zones, but he does have a loading zone right there on the corner of state and uh, court and state okay. on the state side. And his concern is a parking downtown, but all the other businesses share the same concern so cindy did you say the the traffic counts um do they warrant eliminating that that right turn lane there okay okay do we have a sense of what uh, kind of what effect eliminating that right hand turn lane? Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry if I could interrupt. I don't think the the mic is on. I'm, I'm sorry. I you. just realized it wasn't. Um, okay, thank you. What I said was that there's about 15 cars in the morning peak that make the right turn onto state going north, and there's 13 or 15 that do the same thing during the PM peak hour. Um, for them, it's not going to be that great a delay if you put them all into one 
lane. It might back traffic up a little bit more than it does on Court Street going westbound. Um, when we went out and looked at it initially, we hadn't thought about maybe taking one of the other parking spaces and making it um, a 15 minute. And that might be the easier and better thing to do. The one concern that Dan and I the light on Washington and Court is not synced with the light on State and Court. Sometimes it does get backed up. So eliminating right turn and lane might cause yeah. some issue not having that option to turn right from that lane instead of waiting in the middle lane turn right. Okay. So I do think we need a little bit more time just to think about the options here and talk to some of the other business owners in that area. So unless anyone's opposed, um, I think we hold this over until until next time. Okay, next up, 223 Pennsylvania Avenue, speed enforcement in that area. Uh, there is a requested review for signs and a raised crosswalk. This is something we've uh, looked at before. Uh, Sergeant, I think the traffic division was out there again. Yes, we were out there uh, doing some tra traffic enforcement. Um, we did notice that we do have uh, speeding concerns. Uh, usually, most of it, most of the people are that are speeding through the area are leaving the city limits. Uh, when I was out there for a couple of days, most of the people are coming in the city, are within the speed range. Uh, but I think we have adequate signage coming into the city, being that there's a two signs, the city limit sign, there's a city, uh, city speed limit, which is oversized, oversized uh, sign. Uh, once we hit the uh, 10 Ave, an old 10 Ave, people have tendency to think that they're leave, already left the city and they're on the rural route, but it's like 45 mile an hour. As I talked to several people and they had no clue what the speed limit is. This uh, speed sign that we have, it is a just the regular normal size speed limit. And our recommendation for right now is to install one of the oversized uh, speed limit signs and also traffic will uh, continue to enforce. Okay, any discussion or, or questions on this one? Dan, do you know if this the sign shop has uh, like the oversized speed limit sign? We do. Okay. We do, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if this technically requires traffic board uh, approval or not, but. Um, if it does, we can, uh, I can just do a, a quarter, work quarter. I think it's the same thing in the same spot. We're just putting a different one on the post. Yeah, yeah, I would I would do it on the same spot yeah. where the regular is. Okay. Okay. So we would be replacing the the one that's there now with an oversized one. Yeah. Okay. Um just to cover our bases, we'll, we'll, I'd look for a motion to um to accept the recommendation of the traffic division to replace the current speed limit signage uh with the oversized sign. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, next up is 104 Pennsylvania Avenue. This was a request to remove uh, the curb cut, uh, I'm sorry, remove or cut the curb to install a driveway here. Um, Sergeant Traffic went out and looked at, at this one. What's yeah. the recommendation? We went out, looked at it, and our recommendation is to deny uh, it would require uh, removal of a nice pole to uh, have properly installed the driveway. And the distance between the houses is about 16 feet. I'm sure if it's uh, split down the middle, that would be eight feet on each property and I don't think AP is enough 
Okay, so the request from the traffic division is, uh, the recommendation from the traffic division is to deny this request. I had one of my people look at it and come to the same conclusion as in the other one, maybe not. Okay. There's probably not enough room to do it. Okay. Any other discussion or any questions on this? All right, so I look for a motion to accept the recommendation of the traffic division and engineering to deny this request. Motion. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That request is denied. Okay, next up, Zane Road. Um, this is a requested review of the installation of private property signs. So it was brought to our attention. Um, Scott Regal in our office attended the Southside Neighborhood Assembly meeting um, about a week or two ago. And it, George Cummings lives on the corner of Zane and Rush. And he brought up the fact that there's a um, alley behind his house that runs the length of parallel to Zane. And it goes from Rush out to Penn Avenue. Um, there's our signs there that say do not block driveway, I think. Yeah. But they requested um, that signs be put up that it was private property because they said that people are using that as a cut through from either Penn Ab or Rush or vice versa. And so they had concerns about that. We then found out that the city picked up garbage on that alleyway and it gets plowed. Yes. Yep. So we just wanted to make sure that it actually was private property. But I guess Dan talked to me, Dan um, Carell, and said that he went to Corp Council and he went down to engineering. And it definitely is private property. That the property's kind of split down the center of that. So if it's private property, I'm guessing it would be up to the homeowners on either end to post it. It was private. I do think that on the um, Pennsylvania Avenue side, there's a little sliver of property I think belongs to the city of Binghamton. So I, I mean, I don't. You, they couldn't post a sign on there. They'd have to post right. it on whoever property abuts that. So okay. is that the case? I mean, yeah, as far as yeah. your, your understanding we, we too? We take garbage there, we plow that road. There's that little section like you're talking down there, Penn Ave, that is part of that little greenway park yeah. or whatever that we maintain with our parking department. Yeah. So they can't put a sign there. No. How long have you been plowing? Oh, I've been here 34 years, so. I think it's, I think it's a public right away by now. That's what I wondered, and that's what started looking into it, because when I found out they were plowing it, I was like, oh, that's kind of a red flag. But They've done it all this year. If it's yeah. never been closed off and people are using it, we're plowing it, I don't think we can close it off. But yeah, and I don't think they want it closed off, and I'm not sure they, I think they want to keep it as private. It started that they wanted signs put out there, and well, then apparently they that needs to be repaid, so they got an estimate yeah. for repaving. They were looking also for funds to help them pay for the repaving of it. Yeah. But I don't think they want it. I don't know that they want it to be public, but, but it's just something that sort of. But if we plow it, I think it's got to be public. Yeah, I, I don't know the, yeah, I, I don't know the answer, but that was kind of a red flag because I thought there was something after so many years. Of, yeah, when that gas station needs to be open, there you see a hat. People always. Yeah. They could leave the gas station, go down through there, come out rush. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have to go on to Penn Ave. Right. Just as a point of discussion, I know years ago it was posted, whether it was posted by the city or private posting. It had been posted, like I'm talking over 30 years ago into my childhood. That was posted as private, I think it said private out, mm -hmm. no trespassing, and it was not a public thoroughfare. And like growing up over there, we all knew that was private alley and it wasn't open to vehicle traffic. Kids cut through from the back of years ago was the AM, PM, and then the Hesmar. But that's been a private alley. It's probably getting more pedestrian traffic or they anticipate it with this new project that's going through as far as people can pick up that path mm -hmm. at the end of that city uh, portion that the city and the parks department maintain. So I know just historically, Growing up over there on the south side, it, it had been marked and publicly posted on both ends um, to the point where, like, as a child, the, the residents would shoot the kids out of there and, you know, kids would bike through there. And hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
faculty and residents instead of well, so, that out. Several of those residents, the only accessible point by vehicle, like to their garages, is off that alley. So I think the Zane Road, the, the house is made from the front, but they may not have, all of them may not have uh, like driveway access to get to where they park the vehicle off the street. A lot of them do, but yeah. I don't know. But the garages face the alley, Yeah, some of them. If they want it private, then we shouldn't follow. Dan, do you know if it, does the city ever post private signs or would that be, if it is a private road, is it the responsibility of the, okay. Is there anything else like that in the city? The only one that I knew of that somebody else brought to my attention is up off of Woodland uh, on the south side by Spur. And we took a drive up there, but that's like a dead end. It doesn't go all the way to Spur. Yeah, yeah. If that's not posted. Yeah, and you don't plow that one. No. I'm sure. Is there anything else like that in the city that no, you plow? not really. I'm not sure where the power and the utilities run through. Like if you have sewer lines under that stretch or if that's all back out on Zane Road. I know years ago that was, there's a lot of flooding issues down in there. They would take on water, but like where NYSEG accesses, uh, like some of those areas of the west side where the power mains are in the backyard, there's right. just street lamps. So I don't know if that plays into the factor either, but I would think it would be something in their deed. Uh, I don't know. the the depth of it as far as how they share that right away or how that's regulated. It kind of opened a can of worms, you know, when we started looking into it because all they really wanted were the signs posted. And then as I started looking into it, I'm like, well, this is weird if it gets getting plowed and getting garbage pick up back there. And yeah. didn't mean to open a can <laughs> of worms up. <laughs> My understanding of it is that um, if we're plowing and we're and we're picking up trash and garbage there and we're considering it public then the signs wouldn't be wouldn't be posted if it isn't in fact the private alley we wouldn't post the signs either way um so the i don't see a path forward for the city putting up private property signs right. am i am i right in that or I mean, they're not having any problems with people turn around in their driveways right because i don't think i think through. it was more a complaint that people were using it driving straight through right, sure. who weren't didn't live there right that's my understanding it's probably come to a head again because after the house shut down and that property sat vacant and dormant for a period of time they had put like pre cash con, uh, concrete construction blocks and they had blocked that entire parking lot off so it wasn't accessible to any vehicles you had to go in off the rush avenue entrance point i think they've removed those with this project that's going to be underway there and people are now again using it so it sat for a few years with, with no accessibility right. i don't know what your plow trucks were doing if they'd plow up and then just turn around they back in from back out yeah. yeah my sense is that this is a request that we deny is everyone on board with that do we feel is it something that we need to explore further the public I would think they'd be subject to whatever code or ordinance would pertain to what's authorized for public posting private posting of private property okay well, if, they, if they post it as private then I don't think the city would want to get garbage all up. We don't do it for other properties. Okay. Um, so what what I would recommend then is that we uh, we move to deny this request. And what I can do is follow up with Mr. Cummings and that Southside neighborhood group afterwards to see if there are other problems that you know if they're getting through traffic or whatever it might be. Maybe there are other ways we can we can help address those. Um, but for now, I, I would take a motion to uh, deny the request to install private property signs. Motion. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So that request is denied. All right, the last one on our agenda, uh, 124 Front Street. This was a requested review um, uh, 
some speeding issues in front of this property. Um, and I think they were looking at maybe some additional additional signage. Yeah, I think we, we went out there and uh, Dan also requested that we hold this over so we can figure out what she really wants. Uh, there is- I'm sorry to interrupt. Is somebody talking? I, there's, I can't hear anything. Can you hear now? Yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, we went out there and uh, she's concerned about speed, speeding through and other parking, probably uh, alternate side parking issues, which uh, we're going to probably revisit at some point this year, all the alternate side parking. But right now, there's no speed limit sign in front of her residence, but it is in the city limit. So uh, there's other million other signs and uh, we just right now we think that if we just put another sign it's just gonna clog up everything that we had over there so we're requesting to hold this for the next meeting till we can actually go out there and see if we can come up with something that uh, or possibly talk to her in person and see what her real concern is Okay, any discussion or questions on this one? Okay, then we'll, we'll hold this over until the next meeting. Any add-ons or, or any, any any items that anyone wanted to, to discuss today outside the agenda? Megan, I had sent over to you photos for the intersection of Chadwick and now I can't remember the cross street. I sent you the pictures. Yeah. Um, that's the one what I can't, Chadwick and I can't think of what cross street it was. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I said with that and, and it's where new sidewalk was put in before there were curb cuts. And that when the new sidewalks got put in, the curb cuts aren't there anymore. And it was brought to the attention also on the south side. Um, are, you, are you familiar with that, Ron? No. Okay. Um, Do you have an idea? I can't, I just can't think of that side street, that other cross street. Just send me a memo. I'll take care of it. I'll forward you the email from Sydney with the okay. with the pictures. Okay. So I have that one. The other thing I had, and I don't know if the city's been involved at all, but it's been discussed in our office and come up with um, the plans for the Binghamton City School District to do some of the consolidation, closing of schools, moving kids around and everything. And we immediately start thinking in our office about the traffic impacts of that as far as we, because we've been called to so many schools on the traffic board has gotten complaints and we've had to go out and look at um, parent pickup, drop off and everything in a lot of these schools anyway, that if they start doing mergers of schools or closing schools and busing more, so any kids the other side of town, will there be more parent pickup drop offs and are we gonna have more of a problem around these schools? Because none of them can accommodate additional traffic like that really. Um, and I don't know if anybody's like looked at the report or reviewed it, but it that was something that our office was having some concerns about. It's like the traffic impact of doing some of this since we already have problems. Yeah, I, I, I have looked at that report and actually we're, we just received um, correspondence yesterday from um, the board president, Brian Whalen, it sounds like they're slowing down that whole process a, a little bit. Um, and, and they're looking for feedback from, um, members of the public and also stakeholders, um, about some of the different options being suggested. So I can forward this to you, Cindy. They're, they're doing some, um, public input meetings. The first one's June 15th at Roosevelt, but I think they'll be presenting the options. And right. So that was just a concern since I know that we've been, been called out to Thomas Jefferson about a year and a half ago because they were having problems with pickup and um, Woodrow Wilson has issues. Um, it's almost like every school we've been, Franklin, we had the issues out there when we did the um, road safety audit. So if you change some of that and they're being bust or some parents aren't going to put their kids probably on a bus. They're going to drive them. We're just going to have more issues. I'll forward that email. Yeah, just to be aware. Yeah, thank you. Any other items of discussion or anything else? 
Okay, I take a motion to adjourn then. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.